Hello, thank you for joining me. See, in this film, I'd like to show you a little bit more in Dimensioning. Uh, we have some experience with Dimensioning in, uh, in AutoCAD, where uh, dimensions are actually put on the line. It shows you exactly how long that line would be as an example. And if you're familiar with uh, SolidWorks, SolidWorks, uh, when you put a dimension on a, on a design in SolidWorks, uh, the dimension will actually drive that design. So if you draw a line out like 4 inches and put a dimension on it, it'll say 4 inches. But if you change that dimension's value to 5 inches, which it allows you to do, uh, the line suddenly becomes uh, 5 inches. And it's uh, constrained by other things too. So, in a way, Revit architecture is kind of a hybrid between the two. In some circumstances, when you put a dimension on something, it tells you how long that dimension is, but you can't really change the length of that item by clicking on the dimension. It won't let you do that. But if you click on a wall, uh, it will allow you to do that. Uh, if you click on a wall and change the value of that dimension, depending on the constraints that are in there, uh, the dimension value will change. So, what I'd like to do is show you a little bit more on that. All we've done in regard to dimension up, now, up till now. It's pretty much dimension walls, but there are other ways of using dimensions to help you drive your design and using constraints in order to get a uh, model that looks correct and is built uh, correctly and actually comes out uh, good on your drawing. So what I like to do is take my uh, my uh, acoustic ceiling tiles I put in, and right now I'm on the ceiling plan, the ground uh, floor ceiling plan, and I'm going to go ahead and put some constraints in here and some dimensions in here, and then put some elements in there and also put some dimensions in there too, so that when the builder comes along and you know needs to put in that suspended ceiling, he knows what parameters he needs to use in order to get that ceiling the way the builder wants it to look like. So, let's do this. Let's take this line and we're going to constrain it to that line. So remember when we do that, or how we do that, go to the Modify uh, tab on the ribbon, click on the Align tool, and what we want to do is pick, just like we've done before, our static element, the element that we don't want to move first, and then the element we do want to move second. And what that does is it puts the, the ceiling the grid right against that line. So it's going to actually start in that line and then grow from there. We want to constrain that, so we're going to lock it right now. Okay, now if we uh, take a dimension, and a good way to use a dimension uh, in a situation like this is not linear dimension, because uh, Revit Architecture won't allow you to put in uh, redundant dimensions. So a good dimension to use here is a line dimension. A line dimension will allow you to put in both a linear dimension and uh, a line dimensions, and it allows you to, you know, kind of, kind of helps uh, drive your project a little bit. So we're going to click on the inside wall here and find out how long that is, which is going to be 15 feet. So we know our ceiling tiles are 2 feet across, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 14 feet, plus an extra foot left over. So if we put a dimension on one side of this, that's 6 inches, it should be centered in that wall, and that's kind of the design intent, is to have that centered. So let's go to the align dimension. We'll click on this line, and with the tab key, remember the tab key allows you to select different elements. It may not be apparent, it may not allow you to uh, to uh, you know, select right away, the tab key will allow you to do that. We now have a dimension of 9 inches, probably 9 inches and some change there. So it already kind of comes in as a permanent dimension. And what we want to do is we want to change that value. So if you click on that line on our grid, that turns small and blue, allows us to type in a value of 6 inches. And there we go. That's that dimension and Let's go ahead and lock that dimension into place. So now we have two constraints in here. We have a dimensional constraint of six inches, and will allow us to move our, our grid lines. And we also have a constraint in the back here. If we click on this, it'll show you that constraint. And it's, those are the only constraints here. So we have a constraint here, and a constraint here associated with that dimension. Okay, let's put in some lights. So if we go to the Home tab, go to Component, uh, I already have this light uh, loaded, so let's go ahead and scroll down. We have a down uh, light rec uh, recess can, and we're going to start putting in these uh, lights. So I'm going to exaggerate this. What I really want to do is have that can light right in the uh, center of that. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit to show you uh, that we can continue to put in dimensions on this and uh, constrain this a little bit better. So that's a downward can light. We went in the center here, and we're going to do that by putting in some dimensions. So we'll go to the align dimension. And you notice that uh, we can pick on a point inside of this, or a horizontal line or a vertical line. But kind of like with our align tool, we're going to pick the static element first. So we're going to click on this, that grid line, and now we're going to click on that point, or if we can uh, pick up that uh, vertical line, we can do that. And then drag this up here. And just like we did with that other dimension on the grid line on the other side, 
we're going to change this value. So that can light is going to be right in the middle, so we're going to make that 12 inches. Bang. Got that one done. Let's go back to the align dimension. Click on this edge. We're going to have to press the tab key to select that. And uh, maybe that point, but uh, it's always better to dimension to a line or a plane rather than a point. And we're clicking that one. And this too we want to have to be uh, 12 inches or 1 foot. So if you click on that uh, can light, it gives us the ability to change it. Just type in 1. And now we have that permanent dimension. We're going to take that dimension and move it off just a little bit. This is the button you want. So, you know, we have a, a couple grips here to, to deal with. We've talked about two of them. We use this one more often than not. That allows us to pick different elements uh, within, uh, you know, the, our drawing area. But is this one we want? This allows us to move the text out of the way. We, again, we want to move text out of the way so it isn't on top of lines. So it's a little bit more visible and easier to read. And that should do it. So, let's go ahead and uh, copy this. If you click on that can light, go to Copy moldable. I'm going to pick a common intersection on one element that we can copy in various elements. So we can click in this intersection. Here are those two grid lines. And just copy that over. Some of these are going to have to be careful. We don't want to pick midpoint. We do want to pick intersection. These are the very same uh, um, the very same symbols we saw in, in AutoCAD in regard to object snaps. And so there we have it. Last thing I like to do is insert a trophy light. So if we go to the Home tab, go to Component, scroll down to Trophy Light, and we want a 2x2 two two lamp. And we're going to do the same thing, kind of exaggerated here. Go to the Align tool. So we go to Modify, Align, Static Element. Static Element is going to be that, and that. Lock it. Static Element is going to be that grid line and the edge of the trophy light. Lock that. Copy it. You'll notice that uh, this actually, once you get it, get the idea down here, it actually goes pretty quick after that. With the copying and modifications and alignment and stuff like that, you begin to get uh, relatively quick at this. And that's part of the objectives of this class, is to get you productive. So there we go. Trophy lights, can lights. We have our grid lines all lined up. We have some dimensions in to drive into design. So when a person is putting in the ceiling knows what our design intent is, the information that we're giving to them uh, becomes complete. So, thank you for joining me in this short little film, and we'll talk to you soon.